So you want to make your T-Rex 4 climb like a spider, like it's stuck to the rocks, like you've super glued the tyres on. Well, first we need a T-Rex, and take the body off. Although the O-rings don't make this too easy, but they do stop the body from rattling. Brilliant. So you just bought a scaler. So let's find the centre of gravity. From here we can draw from the rear axle to the centre of gravity and find our anti-squat line. And from the front axle back down, that gives us our anti-dive line. And so now we have our anti-dive and anti-squat areas, what do they actually mean? Well, anti-dive will stop the front end from diving under braking. Probably not the most important thing for crawling, but more importantly, it makes the front end compress under acceleration. And anti-squat makes the rear end not compress during acceleration. So what we're doing is dialing in a small amount of anti-squat so that the rear end compresses a small amount, but not all the way down. And the front end, we want to compress as much as possible to help shift the weight forwards, but more importantly, have those springs really push the axles down into the ground and create as much traction as possible. To be able to do this mod, you need some bolts, some Allen keys, a shock mount, and a shock key, a good knife, some bits of plastic if you want it semi-permanent, some more bits of plastic and a soldering iron and some zip ties if you want to make it permanent. The little bits of plastic highlighted are just cut from the tray and you can use those with two bolts to essentially put this link on top of where the, the existing rear top link mount is and just kind of hold the whole thing in temporarily. However, it will wiggle a little bit and not give you the hard mounting you want. If you want it to stay, then use a soldering iron to um, plastic weld it on and you'll see this in the next step. So essentially what I've done is mess about with this upper link by plastic welding it a bit higher which is hidden by this, this lift and hidden behind my fantastic ESC mount is a shock key and we'll go into that in a minute. So if we just take this off, we just take a look under this mount. Now, yes, there's lots of plastic left over, but essentially I've plastic welded that mount on top of the other mount. And if we have a look underneath, we can see This is where I've plastic welded it into where the previous mount was. These links and these links have both been extended quite considerably to the point that the thread is just starting to show here. Um, but it's, you know, there's enough thread in there. It, it does run a good five or six mil inside. So you're not compromising too much strength. And you can probably see just here, that's just starting to show a thread. This just uh, increases this wheelbase. So this, this being a bit longer, puts your shocks at a nice, nice angle, um, which helps make them nice and uh, gentle. Uh, you can see I've, I'm, I'm running quite a lot of rebound uh, in the back. Okay, so the front, um, we can see underneath the ESC. I've actually got my ESC zip tied into where you would normally have your front link bolt. And just here is a bolt that's holding in um, a shock key that you can just see me pointing to here. If we flip this over and take a look. That shock key has been mounted, so it runs along. And we can just about see that this front upper link is connected to the shock key. And what this does is lower the upper front link 
by about four to five mil. As well, you can see my lower links are in a different position. I've removed them from where they would be in here. I moved them up to here. Now to do that, I've had to use um, different rod ends. This rod end is kind of like, instead of being straight, it's an angle. And this rod end, as you can see, is a curved rod end. This allows both of these links to work around the chassis mounting points so that they don't rub. Again, the links have been extended. So by extending those, we get a bit more wheelbase and a bit more angle, um, but it also helps us fit everything. Um, to, to get these to actually sit inside the chassis, um, underneath here, and it's really not easy to see, um, but essentially, essentially just there, There's uh, just a um, bolt with a nut on the end. And up here, I've just trimmed the gearbox casing and, and put the rod end. So as we can see, I've put my ESC at the front, which counterbalances the motor. They're both at the same height, roughly. Uh, the motor is slightly further forwards, but that's just how it is. The battery, I use quite small batteries between about 170 and 200 grams. They sit just above those links at the back that we've relocated. Um, and rather than having the battery at the front, there's 100 grams of weight in the front wheels and no weight in the rear wheels, which means the fronts are 250 and the rears are around about 150. Um, this overall gives a weight distribution of about um, 58, 42 ish. Um, and the weight in the wheels helps the brake over and everything else. When the wheels turn, the axles go in the opposite direction. So our top links push down into the chassis and our rear links pull backwards, which causes the chassis to squat. Now, because I haven't changed the rear link location to be higher, it means that that counterbalances itself and the net effect is that it drops about half its travel. The front, however, probably drops anything between half to nearly full travel, depending on the amount of acceleration. And what this is so good at is on a climb, instead of tipping back, and instead of having to add lots and lots of brass and move the battery up front and make everything really complicated, what happens is just the motion of the acceleration makes the whole crawler go down and forwards. And this really bites the front wheels into the climb. It also means that when you accelerate hard against an object, when you get bounced up in the air, the whole crawler, because of the force it suddenly puts on the axles, pulls the front down and instead of getting bounced up and over, you get bounced up and forwards. So when you're going at an angle and you hit an object, instead of hitting an object and flying off, you hit the object and go over and launch forwards.